Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Yeah, it's Tuesday, baby, and I'm looking super cool, super fly. I'm just kidding. I was just getting my shirt together. Thank you for coming here. I'm glad that you press play. I'm glad that you're here because today is going to be an interesting show. It's always an interesting show, right? But today, you know, remember that evolution nonsense? Remember the stuff that we were told that we came from, like, chimpanzees or monkeys? Yet they're still here. Yeah, well, that's it. It's done. I mean, I know I did, a, I did a video a while ago where I said this puts an end to evolution once and for all, but this is it. This is it. A new study just revealed something crazy. It was released just a couple of months ago. I just stumbled upon it recently. I can't believe that the whole world is not talking about this. The fact that like 90% of all of creation just simultaneously appeared on the scene at the same time. Goodbye, Darwin evolution indeed. You know, you can't just breed a couple of pigeons. You got different little pigeons, you put them together and all of a sudden say, oh yeah, look, this is the reason why uh, we came from you know, single-celled organisms into like lizards, into like you know, blah, 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 blah. None of it, it makes sense because we still have all the other evidence. And there's no missing, you know, the missing link. It's still missing, right? There's no crossover species. We know this. You can't take a horse and you take and you get a mule, right? If you take a horse and you, you, you uh, marry it with a donkey, you get a mule. Get a mule and they're, they're um, anytime that you take two different species and you breed them together, they're um, infertile. They can't go on and uh, have, have more children. But you know, look, forget about that. Let's forget about the fact that there's no evidence of any species jumping to another species. Let's forget about that for a second. This uh, study that was just recently revealed in the journal Human Evolution is gonna change a lot. And that's why it's important that we get this news out there. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things today. This really is meant to get you to question more. Your whole reality and everything that you think is real, it's, it's here to get you to question like, what's the whole point of all of this? Not only am I gonna give you a strong, strong argument as to why, without a shadow of a doubt, there we are part of an intelligent design but we're gonna see a lot of other things that we talk about on the channel connected here. Yeah, like space, astronomy, signals, radio signals, and all this strange stuff that we've been hearing about. It's all connected. We're gonna talk about the advance, like how did we become from like, you know, the Cro-Magnum man, the, uh, the dummy, the dumb, uh, you know, the dumb caveman. How do we go from there to all of a sudden, you know, I'm tweeting. I mean, really, I still don't know how to tweet and another massive discovery. There's so much to talk about. The time is short, so I hope you buckled up, people, because Darwin's going bye-bye. Okay, let's roll the clock back to about 2013, okay? Two scientists from the University of Kazakhstan. I like saying that, Kazakhstan. Well, they said basically that humans may have an extraterrestrial stamp. That's right. They found like what they call like a, you know, like an alien, uh, a barcode or something that's in our DNA that they said there's no way it could have gotten there um, by accident. They say that it's, uh, you know, it has to be some kind of intelligence. Back in 2013, and we, we already knew this. A lot of people knew this already. Like, I mean, you, you look around at everything, something created something, right? Everything in this room that you're looking at, something of intelligence created something that you are uh, experiencing. So it's not really a hard stretch to think that we came from intelligence. But back in 2013, these dudes said, 
that we may have an extraterrestrial stamp embedded into our genetic code, a mathematical message that would not be explained by Darwin's theory of biological evolution. Scientists are suggesting that an advanced alien civilization seeded our galaxy aeons ago. Remember just a little while ago too, we got like, uh, we got some, uh, something came down, it was like this little big, it was titanium, and there was biological life, as if it was like a seed sent from space when we sent that thing out there, and it came back. You know, all these things that we don't hear about, it's pretty insane. So they're saying basically that we were, you know, the product of some kind of alien uh, engineering. You don't gotta go far to my channel to find out that, you know, you have Planet Nine, right? Nibiru, Archopolis, the Anunnaki. That's the whole belief, the Sumerian mythology. All you gotta do is you get into the Nag Hammani library. I probably pronounced it wrong. Where they talk about the Archons and they... <sighs> I'm not here to tell you that we were engineered by aliens. We may have been. I'm here to say that without a shadow of a doubt that there is a creative force that is in charge of all things. And the rest of the things that I touch on today don't um, challenge you to question that. Then uh, watch the show again. So basically they said that we were... Um, we were created very much like a satellite dish. I know it sounds kind of kooky, right? So like a satellite dish receives um, signals, radio, you know, whatever signals that are coming in, you know, uh, Netflix, <laughs> I don't know. Gets the signals coming in. So they said that basically in our uh, genetic makeup is this receiver, like we're, 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 uh, created to receive some kind of signal, which they think is gonna be sent um, from outer space. And for whatever reason, maybe it's like to turn on latent abilities. Like maybe all of a sudden I'll be able to stretch my arm like really, really long. Like, look at this, oh my God, oh my God, what am I doing with my arm? Oh my God, he's here, look at my arm. Look at how big my arm is. Latent abilities, you know, like Plastic Man. Physicist Vladimir Surchopak of Al Farabi Kazakh National University in Kazakhstan and astrobiologist Maxim A. Makakov uh, of the Frenzikov uh, Astrophysical Institute refer to this far out concept, biological SETI, and that we are like a satellite disk, that our bodies are receivers to ET information. Very much like the information that I was just talking about, just like last week. Remember, I told you that there's this, this strange radio signal that is once again hitting us? We've been hammered by radio signals for like the last couple of years, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And this one, this mysterious, powerful force, uh, they say is flinging. There's some kind of mysterious, powerful force flinging a bunch of radio signals at us, radio waves from deep space. Puzzling pulses like these are sometimes called FRBs, fast radio bursts, because they uh, last a few milliseconds. But on the morning of, now listen to this, July 25th, I mean, it's just like, like um, a little over a month ago, okay? And I talked about this. One such burst of mysterious energy whizzed past a new array of radio telescopes nestled into British Columbia, which uh, I think it's Chime. registering one of the rarest radio frequencies to date. Now these events, they're saying, have occurred both in the morning and at night, and like again and again, and the arrival times are not correlated with known 
um, on-site activities or other known sources. So they don't understand where this is coming from, but they do know that it has to be something, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not just, you know, that's some guy boom, you know, back there with a boom box back beyond the Milky Way. radio telescope that detected the strange new signature is Chime. The fast pulse, the low frequency, suggests that the blast was extremely bright and originated from an insanely powerful source somewhere in the cosmos. They don't understand why this signal is hitting us, right? We don't understand why um, this stuff is hitting us. We don't understand why. We don't understand why. I gotta got an idea. I think that everything's working together. That's why I think that right now, I mean, like I talked in my last video, I'm sure a lot of people are just experiencing, it's like a, sh a, a, a poopy show, right? What do they say? It's like things can be very difficult at times, and it seems like right now that that is the case for many, many people. But the good news is that that's only happening because it's getting you ready for whatever is coming, whether it's the lights going on because we're already engineered to receive these radio bursts. And who's to say that it's not coming from God, right? I mean, just, you know, for a second, let's think about that. Because I believe that there is a creative force that's in charge of everything. So who's to say this isn't all part of the plan? That's the reason why, you know, that Revelation 12 sign got so much play. is because it, it happened, and then all of this stuff started happening after it. And here we are now. Now, you'd like to go to school, like my, my youngest, my seven-year-old, you know, he's, he's going into uh, second grade, right? And, um, you know... He will be taught down the road that we have somehow evolved from monkeys. You know, the picture of the blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a lie. It's always been a lie. And now we know why. But before I tell you all about that, which this crazy study, which says that something like 90% all just simultaneously appeared at the same time, that means like the, uh, the, the horse, the dog, the, the human, the bat, the, the cow, the pig, the, the insect, the, the, the fly, the blah, 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 all just poof, on the scene at the same time. I can't wait to get into this because when I read some of this stuff, it's going to blow your mind. I hope you're still with me. But let's move on because somewhere along the line, you know, a lot of people believe that we were engineered by aliens. I don't, you know, that doesn't, I want to say something. It does not discount the idea that there is a, a, a God, a, um, a creator of all. It doesn't discount that because um, that would be like saying that because you have a father and a mother that biologically created you and, and now you can actually go and have people genetically engineer your children so that they have better features, right? We just talked about the Super Soldier program last Tuesday. If you haven't seen it, check it out. That doesn't discount the idea of God, but when, you know, people, when, once people are approached with the idea like, oh my goodness, you know, like if, if aliens were involved, right? You know, they watch a David Icke show, like an awesome David Icke video, and, uh, <laughs> right? And, uh, and at the uh, end of the video, you're like, oh, I can't believe in God anymore. That's foolishness. That's really foolishness. Because obviously everything comes from one thing. And there's a reason why we're all here, and there's a reason I'm doing this. And there's a reason why we went from just being, you know, blubbering animals that just, you know, walk around beating things with our hands, like animals, to the brain snapping on and uh, creating and thinking and the, the, the wheel and then, you know, fire and, and then, and, and here we are right now, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence. But there was a moment, right? There was a moment where the light just went on. It was like, so I like to talk a lot about um, Genesis. And if you look at it in stages, like where God created man, man was created. And then at a moment, there was a moment where God breathed life into man. So man was already a being walking around, a soulish being, much like we are, right? And uh, much like that caveman was. And then all of a sudden the light goes on and it becomes a child of God. That happened. In 2004, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Chicago, um, they announced a startling result. This was a big deal. Study done, it was, it was done for many years. The publication stated that the sophistication of the human brain was due to a, check this out because it goes along with today, 
right? I've talked about this too in the past and it's amazing how it's all connected, all the little breadcrumbs coming together. The publication stated that the sophistication of the human brain was due to a special event. Around 50,000 years ago, our genes went through an enormous amount of change in a very short period of time. Some scientists refer to this as the Big Bang of the brain. I refer to it as like that upgrade, right? We got the upgrade, we got the first upgrade. And now I think that we're, uh, we're uh, looking for that second upgrade, right? That second one. We're waiting for that, where they were uh, at the end of the road to Emmaus, it says, go back to Jerusalem and wait until you are endued from power from on high. So it's like, we're all sitting here and we're waiting, right? And we're waiting and we're waiting and we're seeking and we're praying and we're trying to do better. And even though we fall sometimes and we fail sometimes, we, we're, our heart is in the right place. Even though we can't seem to, you know, make ends meet, we know that we're gonna be provided for. Even though it seems like, you know, our relationships may be falling apart, we know that whatever's gonna be is gonna be and things are gonna work out in the end like they always do because we have faith in more and we're waiting for that moment. We're waiting for that moment where we can just wake up, where that, that big bang for the brain happens again and the spirit of God, if you will, that Christ takes over. And that day you say, as Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ. Think about that for a second. Now what if, because we're designed like these big satellite disks, right? Well, I'm ready. How many times I sit out in the yard, right? And the sun's shining on me, I'm like, all right. You know, because photons carry an enormous amount of energy, right? Photons, light. Think about that for a second. So when we have these, these outpourings of, you know, solar eruptions and we have, now right now we're going into this grand solar minimum, all of this stuff is happening at the same time that we're seeing crazy changes in the magnetic field. We're seeing animals acting in strange ways. We're seeing all sorts of earth pangs. The earth is, is, is literally erupting. And we're getting this signal that's being sent at us. A mass from an enormous power source just being flung at us. And it's hitting us. And maybe something's happening inside. Maybe the lights are going on. So what if that signal is basically turning that light on. Well, what would that light be? Some would say that it's the pineal gland. Pineal is where Jacob actually spoke to God face to face. It's actually a photoreceptor. It's kind of, it has, it has uh, cones and rods like the human eye. It also has to do with our sleep patterns and waking up. This could be that receiver and perhaps that signal is for us indeed. Maybe it's time for us to say, the heck, we're done with Darwin being taught in our school. The, the reason it's taught in our school is to keep us ignorant of the truth. Because if we understand the truth of who we are, then we then have the power and the wisdom of God. And we then have all things that are possible for us because of the faith that we found. So we don't need to be a slave or controlled anymore. They don't want the lights to go on. That's why videos like these, you know, I'll get my 10,000 to 20,000 to 30,000 views in a week or so. But rarely have I, once they caught on to this channel, it seems like rarely has a video gone viral. When I first came on, it was like one after the other, after the other, after the other. Then there was a stamp, it just went down. But it's because not everybody's ready for all this. Not everybody's ready for this. A lot of you, you didn't believe in God a little while ago. Now all of a sudden you're like, you're sending me emails and you're like praying and you're reading the Bible and you're asking me what the, I should do. And, and I'm not your leader. I tell you, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just a, uh, just your friend. I'm trying to tell you what's worked for me. Go to the source because there's enough evidence that proves that there is one. So we get to the heart of today's show. Okay. So I've done videos in the past about evolution where I've said that, you know, we found now that the human skull looks very much like the human skull today. They found it 
I don't know how many, it was like 10,000 years earlier than they said it was possible or something. I don't remember the video. I did the video. You can check it out. Um, so we don't have that missing link. We don't have it. There's no, I mean, come on. We've done a lot of excavation in the world. By now, by now, we'd have it. We don't have it, okay? So this kind of happened by accident. Now, what's interesting about this is at the same time that I'm talking about this, you got a lot of, you got a couple of movies coming out about God revealing himself to people. Like this one. And just last year, they had this, you know, living biblically. And then they got this other movie about getting in touch with God and, and understanding God and God being a part of your life and speaking to you for the first time ever. I said that the dragon was going to be cast into the earth. And then I said that all this stuff was going to happen. But as that's happening, the, uh, the door is opened. The veil has been lifted away. It's the time is now. Teach me the truth, no matter what the cost. Okay, so this comes out. Study unwittingly uncovers possible major flaw in evolution. Yeah, a little bit, okay? So check this out. This cat, <laughs> this cat, Mark Stuckel from Rockefeller University in uh, New York and David Thaler at the University of Basel in uh, Switzerland. They published these findings, okay, last week. Now this, the, it, it, the article says it, it's going to jostle, if not completely overturn, uh, how evolution unfolds, okay? So they basically, they went through like, I mean, this is something that happened over many, many years. They've been collecting DNA, samples of DNA, gene samples, gene snapshots, they're like these little barcodes, okay? Of all of these different um, living creatures and they've compared them with each other. And what they were first doing was they wanted to see if there would be any changes, you know, from species to species. And they, what they noticed was there was very little change over time. A very little change, and um, so there was very little evolution, if you will. Now, we all do evolve, right? We evolve physically, we evolve um, spiritually and emotionally, but not like I'm going to now become a butterfly. So, okay, in textbook uh, biology, for example, uh, that species with large, far-flung populations like ants and rats and humans will become, you would think that they would become more genetically diverse over time. But the answer is no, not at all. <laughs> and that's not even the crazy part. We're getting to the crazy part, said Stockel, lead author of the study published in the Journal of Human Evolution. For the planet, 7.6 billion people, 500 million house sparrows, 100,000 sandpipers, genetic diversity is about the same. There's no genetic diversity between like uh, billions of different creatures they're finding. But the study's most startling result perhaps, is that nine out of 10 species on Earth today, listen to this, including humans, came into being the same time, like 200,000 years ago. The conclusion is surprising that 90% from their studies uh, has proven that they just, 90% just poofed on the scene. It's kind of like, you know, if, if Elon Musk were to say that this is a simulation, it would be like, you know, that's when uh, the matrix went on, right? And, uh, but, or that's when God created everything. Or that's when God, you know, did that next step, you know, creating the earth, creating this, creating that, and then creating the animals at the same time, by the way, which I find fascinating. The conclusion was so surprising that they fought against it. They didn't, because they understood that this is, just flies in the face of everything that is taught today. Isn't that cool? I mean, just appeared magically? Come on. The reaction is understandable. How does one explain the fact that 90% of all animal life, genetically speaking, is exactly the same age? That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? How can we all be the same age if we we were like the little single cell, then we became the fish, and then we became the, the, the snake, and then we became the dinosaur, and then it became the bird, and we became the blah, 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 blah. Baloney! We 
uh, were created in the image of God, right? Now think about that for a second. I wanna, I wanna twist that a little bit for you. And not in a bad way. I wanna unravel it, I should say. If we are created in the image of God, the image of God would be what? What we're created in. You see that? Not that we're created as the image of God. The image of God, we're created in it. In other words, right now, who you are, you're being created within. So when God created man, okay, after he was created, man was walking around and then one day he breathed life into him and man became a living, breathing, spiritual being. He became conscious, right? And then of course he made a mistake of eating from that tree and then, you know, and then fell into thinking that he is just Jacob, just some guy you know, and um, who believes a certain way because he was taught that. He was formed from the dust of the earth. And see, so there was a time when the lights went on, but then we died to the truth of who we are. So we come into this world and we literally are crucified. We fall into a lower state of consciousness, into a carnal state of consciousness. And perhaps we need the light to go on. That's what this uh, rapture is all about. One day I'm gonna, I have videos on this already. <laughs> Go looking for it, because it's not what you think. But one day, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, right, the lights are going to go on, and the dead in Christ are going to be raised. In other words, those that are ignorant to the truth are going to come to the knowledge of the truth. And why is that? Well, perhaps it's because we were meant to receive an incoming message, and I hope that you're receiving it. Because today is the day to not just receive it, but to embrace it. Today is the day to go higher, to do more, to be that person that you know that you can be, but you just give yourself excuses to not be that person. Today is the day to move on into victory. And I hope that you're moving on with me. And I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank all my patrons. That is so, so super helpful. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you want to find out more what you can do for the channel, just, you know, do me a favor. Hit subscribe. Click the bell. Watch the show. Give me a like. Give me a comment. And if it means something to you, pass it along to your friends. It's a huge help for me. And I love each and every one of you for it. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.